Hey, what's going on there, folks? Welcome back here to a Tuesday night. It is the Earthmaster out here, May 7th, 2024, about 1023 p.m. here, California time. Latest activity shows a 1.9 into the region of Hawaii. Going to start off here with space weather activity because we're currently kicking up here with a near X flare once again. Uh, this is not the X flare that I posted earlier, but a uh, actually a rather large one coming off of the uh, other sunspot now. Let's see if we can get this to kick up here, hopefully. Looks like we're running good. All right, uh, so there it is. Actually, it looks like it did peak up into the X flare category in X 1.0. Now, that is coming off of a different sunspot than our previous X flare. It's going to be this region down here, this massive complex sunspot that uh, I've been chatting about here for a little bit. So, goodness, have we seen a <laughs> basically a train of large flares here recently? Uh, the largest one so far in the last few days, a X 4.5. Uh, now, there's obvi obviously some potential that we could see something larger than that with the current ongoing activity uh, from these sunspots. So the one currently producing the X flare is going to be this region right here, 3664. Super complex. Um, uh, it's been a while since I've seen anything look that uh, that much of a dandy of a sunspot. Goodness. So this is going to be one to watch. It is currently facing the Earth and uh, would be 100% geo-effective should it blast off anything of significant CME material. Uh, this region up here, the source of numerous X-flares and quite a few M-flares. And the previous X-flare prior to this one is drifting off towards the northwestern uh, area of the sun and will be out of sight, out of mind here probably by tomorrow or so. Uh, so we're left with 3664 promising us uh, some stronger flaring as it continues to evolve. 50% chance for X flare, M flare at 90% chance, C flare around 99% chance. So uh, again, our uh, our region right here, uh, 3664, doesn't look like Kevin's jumped on board here yet with that flare, uh, but that definitely peaked up there into the, uh, the X flare. Now this is more of a long duration event compared to or um let me double check that make sure yeah that's a little bit more of a longer duration than our uh, x flare earlier this evening a few hours ago um, notice the real quick impulsive event there from that x flare but this one's longer drawn out may have a uh, cme associated with it and so we'll have to keep an eye on that area let me get a, a quick snapshot of that because that's a uh a beautiful view of that X flare again not from this region but uh, from our super complex very large active region here 3664 look at this this is the visible disk here and uh, that's that's a good one we'll have to watch that here for um, a little gnat on me for some stronger flaring here in the days ahead while it's currently facing the earth uh, there is a radio blackout being observed here, uh, mostly across the area of um, um, Asia area, uh, centered over, it's hard to say exactly where, maybe China region it looks like, but either way, a little bit of radio blackout being observed there, uh, high frequency communication systems and the low frequency navigation systems could be affected from that uh, very large X flare coming in right now. And uh, I think we'll have a, you know, have a decent chance of seeing some more. Look at that. I believe that's got an explosive um, demeanor to it. Look at that. It's, uh, looks like a massive CME. We're definitely going to have to check that if that's the case here. Uh, I want to use this one as a thumbnail once I get, uh, <laughs> once I get things all uploaded and whatnot. And by the way, hopefully... Hopefully, um, this arrow is a little bit larger now uh, for the folks to see. I did have a couple people asking about that. I made it as large as I can. So hopefully, it's pretty big on this end, but hopefully you guys can uh, see that a little bit better. Beautiful. I think this has a, uh, a pretty decent CME associated with that. Uh, but we'll get a little bit better detail on that here uh, tomorrow. There, oh, yep, there we go. Looks like uh, Kevin just jumped on board here for an X 1.0 from 3664. All the other ones, 
the the X players here have been from 3663, which is the far side sunspot. All right. So no major roars in the forecast for now, but that could change now that we got uh, some decent, uh, potentially uh, large CME activity headed our way in the days ahead. Uh, earthquake activity here, a little bit of movement south here into the border, uh, just south of the border, 4.1 off of the Imperial Fault. Aside from that, mostly smaller microquake activity out here today. Looking at the uh, 2.5 map and above, not a whole lot. Uh, just some minimal earthquake activity out here. A little bit in the Gorda ridges. That's going to be a 2.7 from earlier this afternoon. And it uh, looks like a handful of smaller quakes there across the Mount St. Helens area. Let's um, double check the trimmer map here. See what's going on here. We've got 43 epicenters of trimmer. Not that big of a deal. Just a little number there into the Northern California area. This is the extreme southern end of the Cascadia subduction zone. Uh, still seeing some activity out in the Utah area. Looks like this has halted though as of earlier this afternoon. Uh, but they were seeing a pretty decent amount of swarming going on out there in the last couple days. As far as any large scale movement goes around the globe, well, looks like the um, down here across the east Pacific Rise area, the Chile Rise region, seeing uh, some elevated earthquake activity out here in these fracture zones that could uh, intensify movement here across the South America region here along the Peru Chile Trench. So we'll keep an eye on that. Uh, a little bit of movement up north around the Ecuador area as well. Uh, getting some uh, deeper movement quakes here into the Izu Trench and the typical clustering that's going on here across the Philippines southward. Uh, 3.5 looks like right now underneath the North Island area. Uh, definitely looks like things are starting to uh, get active here uh, across many areas of the plates out here. I'll definitely continue to watch that overnight uh, now that we got some further stronger uh, X flare activity. Uh, could get some proton events here from that as well here soon. Uh, there's that trail of activity stretching out here towards the uh, upper east rift zone of the Big Island um, around Kilauea Volcano. Uh, this is another area we're watching here for some eruptive activity here soon. Uh, a chance that it could displace some magma away from the area as a new magma intrusion event. But uh, I don't know. It's it's inflating pretty good there uh, underneath that region. Make sure I got the volume turned up all the way. Hopefully, hopefully it wasn't too low. Just notice here my volume knob was down a hair. All right, uh, latest update here that was put out today, just kind of talking about the continued earthquake activity uh, with about 230 earthquakes in the past 24 hours. It uh, looks like approximately 140 earthquakes were lo located in the upper east rift zone in a zone extending from the crater to the intersection of the Helena Pali Road region. So uh, still looking at... Uh, the elevated activity there, ground deformation. Let's check this out here real quick if it's going to let us. There we go. Still seeing that uh, elevated movement here in the last couple days. Overall trend here in the last 30 still shows that uh, we're still elevated out there across the summit region. So we'll definitely continue to watch out here, folks. Uh, Storm Prediction Center looks like most of the severe weather that uh, folks are dealing with is going to scoot off further to the east um, tomorrow. Uh, but this is a broad area here for Wednesday. Look at that huge tornado threat out there once again. Wind and hail events across this area. Um, goodness, uh, they've been getting a lot of tornadoes out here. And we got one or two more days to deal with it before a temporary break in the severe weather out here. I was looking at these weather models. And uh, after, after this Thursday and Friday, uh, things start to mellow out out here in terms of the significant severe weather mostly thunderstorm activity really no setup in terms of severe weather potential until um potentially right here end of next week we'll have to watch that could be a, a return of some severe weather it, it does look active uh once we get uh through the middle of may and into the middle of may or uh end of may as far as that severe weather potential goes uh, Yellowstone National Park, not a whole lot going on here across this area for now as far as earthquake activity goes. Um, so, you know, all eyes on uh, the flaring that's going on out here. That's a, actually a pretty significant flare and a long duration event 
from this massive sunspot region. Again, this could definitely produce a lot bigger flare than what we just seen here. It's very complex, very dynamic. Got a lot of energy out here on the earth facing side of the sun right now. And uh, 3664 is a, uh, it's, it's in the, uh, what's, what's a word for it? I was going to say an eyesore, but it's really not. It's actually a really beautiful sunspot, very complex. It's only been growing here. Uh, it's in the last couple of days really took off here. It seems like overnight. So we'll watch this area. Definitely capable of producing some very strong flares. And again, probably stronger than what we just witnessed here. So we'll check back in the morning, see how things go. Have a good night, folks. Stay safe out there. I'm going to jump off here and try to get some sleep. Uh, have yourself a good evening. We'll catch you guys back out here in the morning.